guys, what's up? It's Hachika. Welcome to my channel where I do art student lifestyle videos. So if you're interested in any of that, head down below and subscribe. I hope you're having an amazing day and let's get into it. Okay, honestly, bear with me with this filming setup. I, again, I'm still in the process of figuring out. The last few videos I've posted are just in bullet journal videos, which is a lot easier to do because I'm in very little part of it, like the tiniest portion. But this is a like a proper video, like I sit down, I'm gonna talk about things and you're gonna look at my face <laughs> type of video. I did find, I feel like, yeah, yeah, maybe. I'm trying to still also figure out the, the lighting situation, but I feel like this is working. Is it working? Do you guys like it? Let me know, cause I, I think this is good. Like I think, I think I've got it down now. <laughs> Yeah, so today is gonna be a double part review, actually. Or a double review? No, a double part. Double review. Double review. We're gonna be talking about a book, and we are all because I had a few goals, you know, like the big yearly goals of 2024. One of them was to go back to reading books, which I have been doing recently, which is great. And number two was to go back to YouTube. And number three was to work out more. I've been doing okay on the YouTube front and the working out front, although that's, I've gotten a little bit lax recently. Like I wanna say in the last couple of weeks, I haven't been able to go just because of various things happening, loads of things going wrong, but here we are. And the book bit, I started again. I'm, I'm trying to be really good about it. I have books on my Kindle. I carry it every day to work. I read, the two hours that it takes me to go and come back and honestly those two hours of reading is kind of enough like i i finish a book within a week if i'm reading two hours a day honestly it's great current read is seven husbands of evelyn hugo which i feel like i should have read a long time ago all of my friends read it when it came back when it came out when it became the big sensation the big thing on the internet and actually one of my friends was really like she's kind of my reading friend we talk about books a lot and <laughs> she's a person who was like behind me to read it but i think at some point she just gave up because she knew i'd just keep adding things like she kept suggesting books to me and i feel like she realized like i just kept adding them to my tbr and then just never getting around to them which this year the goal is to get through as much of my TBR as I can, rather than adding to it, which I'm still adding to it. Every time I book in, walk into a bookstore, I take pictures of the books that seem cool and I add to my TBR, but I wanted to kind of get on with my reading list. And so here we are. So I'm currently reading The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I just finished Gwen and Art Are Not In Love, which is gonna be my next review. Look forward to that. I really like that book, <laughs> you know, spoiler. The book that we're gonna talk about today, I also love. I love the whole series. So that's one. And number two, I'm going to, for the first time, it's gonna be a first impressions video, first impressions slash review of the Spring Dragon palette by Judy and Odin's Eye. So I got the first palette, the Red Dragon palette, like when it launched. And I looked at the other two palettes in the Legendary Diversa collection, like when it came out. And one, I didn't follow the creators. And two, I, just I didn't like the color story. I already had those colors in those exact combinations in different palettes. And so I, I just was like, I, I'm not super drawn to this. The only red palette I really had was the one from ColourPop, you know, the nine pan sort of individual color ones. And so even back then, I didn't really have like a red and gold kind of a palette. And I really liked the red dragon, the theme and all of that. And so then when she came up with the spring dragon palette which was really recently i was like one i want to buy it for like the collection like it's two palettes it's not really a massive collection but what i mean is like, i would want that completeness number two it's a pastel palette and i don't actually have a pastel palette i was gonna buy the the natasha denona pastels palette so many whatever so many ever months ago like it, i think it came out summer last year or whatever whenever it came out and I just somehow never got around to it and I didn't buy it. And so today I, so then when I saw this one, I was like, oh, this is way better because it's smaller. It's easier to sort of see. I love the Odin's Eye formula already. 
And you know, I love Judy. She's she's adorable. <laughs> so I thought this is my time to finally get a pastel palette. And yeah, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So give me a second. I will just go grab all the stuff and be back. Okay, I'm back. I have things in front of me, including a mirror. So I can do my makeup. Um, we're gonna talk about also a few things that I've been loving in terms of my makeup, but I'm gonna do a separate dedicated video to that later. So the book that we're actually gonna be talking about, this is two books, sorry. The book that we're gonna be talking about is, uh, is this one is before we say goodbye it is part of the before the coffee goes cold series so normally i would reread a book before doing this normally i'd go back and reread the book <laughs> before doing a review just so i could talk about the book in depth and with spoilers thing is i didn't need to reason being that actually Oh, this is part like it's four books if you haven't already heard of it it went super viral last year on tiktok and even like youtube i saw a bunch of book reviewers doing reviews i am one of those reviewers who believe everybody whether you read fiction non-fiction whether you don't read at all you should go back and read this book and this series i just believe that it's i don't know it's very human it's like it's one of those books that just makes you feel things and it's like it's very raw in the way it tackles human emotion and you know um just the way humans are with each other the way we exist and yeah i think it just makes you feel things and <laughs> that may sound very vague and absurd but i i believe this it just it, that's the best way to put it so I have the Spring Dragon palette. I haven't even opened it. Like, I have opened it, but I, like, I haven't used it before. So, you know, first impressions. The cover art. Incredible. <laughs> See, you've got the fucking plastic on top of it. Anyway. So, this is going to come later. I'm going to do my face first. So, I actually have these two books here with me this is book three and book four and my the first two books i also have but that's back home in mumbai just because i i took it back home for my father to read and he still hasn't read the second one he read the first one or the second one now without spoiling too much of the book i'm gonna i'm gonna put in chapters spoiler versus spoiler free and i'm gonna talk about the series in general not the fourth book Although there is a story in the fourth book that I love. I think it was just fabulous and yeah. Anyway, so let's talk about the books. Now, the thing, this whole series is based on this one premise. Now, okay, let me put it this way. So every book has four short stories they're very short books as you can see this is a hard cover and it's still only this big so every book has four short stories in it and every short story it has the same setting the same sort of ambient characters and the same premise and the only thing that changes is the sort of main character and the sort of thing that they're tackling let's just say so number one the setting the setting is based in these cafes where you can go in and you can ask to go back or forward in time and now this sounds very vague basically it's a cafe that allows the person like i said to go back or forward in time but it's got rules it's not your like typical sort of time traveling story which um i'm gonna talk about as well before we lose the time war book oh my god definitely one of my favorite books of 2023 by the way so it's not your basic time traveling story you don't just travel in time it's got rules and 
I'm not really spoiling anything by telling you the rules just because you get to know literally in the first story because that's how the story progresses, right? And they stay the same throughout the um throughout all like 16 stories now. Essentially you get you can ask to go back or forward in time. Most people ask to go back because they want to confront something, see someone, you know, kind of face a regret that they have, etc. And essentially, the thing about going forward is the future is uncertain and it, it can, it changes depending on the choices that people make. And nobody knows what's going to happen. And it, it gets affected by these other rules. So there's actually only one story, if I remember correctly, that has someone going forward in time. Now, let's talk about the rules. Rule number one. There is a cup of coffee poured for you. And it's hot coffee, which I hate. <laughs> but it's hot coffee. And you have until when the coffee is poured for you from when the coffee is poured for you until it goes cold to finish whatever you need to do and drink the whole cup of coffee and come back to the present because otherwise if you don't you're basically gonna die you're gonna get lost in limbo but get lost in you know time traveling and you are going to die and then you're gonna become the ghost <laughs> the ghost is a person who sits in a particular seat in the cafe and the only way you can go back or forward is to sit in that particular seat where she is sitting and for that to happen you have to wait for her to go to the toilet which is just the most weird thing right like does do ghosts go to the toilet i don't know you have to wait for her to go to the toilet now there's only a particular person in the cafe who can pour the coffee for you to send you back or forward it's based on some some of the rules some of the family stuff in their family which is fine and so you need to come back you need to drink all the coffee come back before it goes cold hence the title of the book before the coffee goes cold no matter what you do if you go out in the past no matter what you do the present will not change it's gonna stay the same and you know, even if you warn the person, you should tell the person something or the other is going to happen where what had to happen is going to continue to happen. Like if someone was in an accident and you go back like six months before the accident and say six months at, on this time and this date and whatever, you're going to go in an accident. The person will know and they'll avoid that accident, but they're still going to fall sick or, or get hurt in some way or the other, whether that be a different accident or you know, they themselves are going through something or whatever, right? Like, that is one. That is, that's number two. Number three is you can't leave the seat that you're sitting in. If you do, you're going to get brought back to the present. You know, the seat of the ghost. And number four, because of that, it has to be a person that's visited the cafe before. Because if you can't leave the seat, how the hell else are you going to see them? You know, except for to, for them to come to the cafe. Those are basically the rules. Now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about the stories. Each book has four different stories. And coming up to four books, that's 16 short stories where someone or the other goes back in time or forward in time to meet the person that they need to meet. There's one where it's like, oh, she, you know, the boyfriend moved away and then they broke up. And then there's one where it's like, there's one where the, like one that was really good was like someone gets Alzheimer's. And so their sort of their partner goes back in time to tell them, oh, I, I love you so much. Um, obviously, the freshest ones in my head right now are the ones from the newest book. Thing is, there's one story. I remember, I think it was in the first book, if I'm not totally wrong. It's the only book where 
one of the sort of main families like one of the main families people goes forward in time she is essentially she's pregnant and she's been told that she's gonna have she's gonna die during childbirth because it's gonna be bad for her and she decides to keep the baby anyway and you know then she goes forward in time to tell her 15 year old daughter that she loves her and that she's sorry that she had to die not gonna lie every story will get you every story got me i was crying like a child in <laughs> I could not read more than one story at a time because I would just start sobbing. It was fucking ridiculous. Now, this book though. Look at the title. Appreciate the beauty. Anyway. <laughs> oh, which, by the way, these are the colors. It's a pastel palette. Hopefully I can get a complete look out of it. I think I can just from the... I feel like I can do like a pinky purpley look. Let's talk about the palette for a second. Let's take a break from the book and talk about the palette. So like I said, I didn't actually have a pastel palette. I didn't, I watched Judy's video introducing the palette, but I didn't actually watch Judy's video doing the three looks that she does. Um, just because I wanted to kind of see for myself and see if I could do something with it. So I see there's, there's pinks and dark pinks and purples. Um, they're also green and a yellow, which will go well together with the brown, I think. Um, but for today, we're gonna do a pinky purpley look. I feel like I might do two different looks on two eyes just because I'm trying to review it, you know? Let's be good about it. Mm, I think so. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go with this shade first, which is Flora. It's got the sort of... It's got the dragon claw going through it. It seems like a cool, like, pinky transition shade. It's a bit dusty. Don't do like I do and blow on your eyeshadows. That's a little bit unhygienic, but. Mainly what I'm looking for is it's it's a light palette. So it has to have pigment for, for it to go onto my, for it to show up on my skin's fine. Um, Cause I don't like my eyeshadow base to be super light. So I just use my concealer, like, you know, like your 2016 makeup. Um fine showing up okay yeah i don't know if you guys can see it my phone is too far away from me to make up i can see it in the mirror though um showing up okay i guess that's the whole point of a pastel palette right um i'm gonna do two simple simple eyeshadow looks just because next we go in with with hua H-U-A, which is just the pastel purple look. Uh, sorry, pastel purple eyeshadow. I feel like each row could be its own look, if I wanted it to be. Not really, but maybe. I'm sure she explained it in her video doing the looks, but again, I haven't watched it, so I couldn't tell you if I tried. Um, going back to the pink a little bit. Not bad. I'm going to deepen it with this one, which is Blossom. It's got like a dragon eyes imprint in it, which is pretty. I'm just going to deepen my, my outer V and my crease with it. Um, cool, 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 cool. This one's really showing up. The purple and this pink is really showing up. The light pink was low, but like, okay, I had to build it up really. But again, I do like Odin's Eye formulas just for this this purpose because they do actually, you can, some of them are buildable, some of them give bang pigment all at once, which you have to know how to blend them out properly. Anyway, you have to know how to blend eyeshadows out properly, but like it's, you know, it's not a... It's not super complicated, it's easy, but it's like, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to put this to you guys. Because I'm not a trained makeup artist. You guys know this. I'm studying fashion design, not makeup. Um, but I love makeup and it's like a hobby for me. And, you know, I've been doing it for a while now. And so I'd say I'm I'm well trained enough to figure it out. Okay, I'm just going to build a purple a little bit in the middle. 
I'm gonna do the glitters last. Like, I'm gonna deal with the glitters last. Okay, back to the book. Basically, the two stories that stood out to me in this one, the first one, oh my god, I, I actually started this book on my way to work and I was in a bus when I was finishing the story and I'm not joking when I say I'm, I'm like looking up and blinking back tears. Like it was, I was like, I cannot cry on public transport first thing in the morning. I have makeup on. I'm going to work. This is just bad. Like why are you doing this to me? Best part is I knew it was going to happen because that's really weird. Anyway, I knew it was going to happen because I, you know, I've read the other books. The other books made me cry really fucking hard. But I like, I just, the way it hit me in the, like right in there, it, it was, it was, wow. I'm gonna spoil this now. Now is spoiler part of book number four, which is called Before We Say Goodbye. So if you don't want spoilers, um, spoilers on your two stories. So if you don't want spoilers, click out now. And maybe click in at the end when I finish the review for this palette. But anyway, first story itself is there's a guy, he walks in a cafe, he's completely fascinated by the whole process, right? Like they immediately know that he wants to go back in time, but the way he's going about it is just a bit odd. Like he's asking like scientific research questions, which is when you find out that he's actually a professor of archeology span and he is just enamored by the whole thing. Like he is so, sort of like he's he's kind of like he's losing his mind that this is real which obviously it's it's fiction for us but you know like in the story and so even but like basically one of the main characters is this waitress called kazu she's part of the family she's the one who pours the coffee she is she's got this very like no nonsense sort of attitude you see it throughout the books and you know even she's kind of taken aback by this man's questions because she's like whoa like nobody's asked any questions before and so he he's asking all these questions and then she's like do you want to go back in time or no <laughs> essentially is the vibe and he's like yeah yeah i want to go back and they're like why why do you want to go back because it seems you have more of an academic interest so you know they're like it just seems like you have more of an academic interest than anything and essentially it's like why do you want to go back in time what is your what is the purpose of your visit into the past and he's like he tells you that he had a wife has a wife who is currently in a coma and he wants to just visit her before the act before she you know gets in the accident before she falls into the coma and they're like you know even if you tell her that the accident's still gonna happen right and he's like, yeah, yeah, I heard your rules. That's not why I'm visiting. I just need to tell her something before it's too late. And then it's like, well, what do you need to tell her? And so he goes on explaining about their marriage. And he's like, well, when we got married, we were really young. She was, she had already divorced one guy or she was a widow or something. Basically, she had already been married once before. And these guys got set up and they got married and you know he's like we got married and i was always away and she was always at home with the kids and you know i was always doing different excursions and i was happy doing that and she never once complained she never once you know was bitter my kids were because they didn't have their father but she never was she always greeted me with a smile when I left and always greeted me with a smile when I came back. And you know, already you were like, oh my God, like this is gonna be sad. But he's like, you know, so I just wanna see her one more time. And so they're like, okay. So they sent him back in time. And you know, they're like, how do you know your wife is gonna be here? And he's like, I know there's a particular date every year where she always came here. This is not looking good. It's looking a bit like muddy. Mm. This is looking way better. Okay, so 
you're already like what the fuck and so he then he's like you know i'd like to go back in time and so then the ghost leaves the chair and he goes back in time and when he reaches when he lands at the time that she's she's there you know she's there with his daughter and his grandchild and you know and her daughter's daughter and stuff and he sees her and he's like i've come back from the future and you're this is six months before her accident and so this is two and a half years before the present and so he's like in six months you're gonna be in an accident and i just came back to tell you something and obviously because she's with the daughter the daughter's like the daughter keeps interrupting and she's like you know do you know you know that's such a bad thing to say la 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 do you know what it's been like to be your daughter blah 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 and you know she doesn't let her mother get a word in edgewise and she doesn't let her father get a word with murder in edgewise and she's like do you know why mom comes here every year and he's like no why and so she says because it's your wedding anniversary and he's like what and then he was like He turns to her and he's like, you know me, you know, I didn't really ever care about dates or anniversaries or birthdays or any of that. And I know you were aware of this and, you know, you stayed with me all these years. And he was like, and so he's like, I'm sorry for everything. And I was happy in our marriage. And thank you. And... This is when the mom speaks and she's like, I was happy too. And thank you. And I, it just got me like in the feels. Honestly, I'm not saying this as well. I mean, if you read it, you you understand what I mean. It's just like, this just got me. Like even now I'm just like, okay, <laughs> it was sad. It was really sad. Cause like, you know, she's going to then, you know, go into a coma and, and you know, he comes back and he comes back to, to the present and he's like, I finally regret something and he's like i regret not telling her essentially his regret in life was that he didn't get to tell her that he appreciated her that he loved her and that he was happy in their marriage and that he was glad she was who she was um which wow i don't think anybody says this to their partner often enough it's just like i'm i'm glad you're in my life and i love you and i hope and I'm happy with you. Like, I just feel like marriages would be so much better if people did that. Like, just appreciate your partner. It's, it's not that hard to do. So that was the first story, actually, in the book. And, and yeah, and he comes back and he starts crying because he's like, that was one incredible woman and he just didn't appreciate her as much as she he maybe should have while she was still, you know, cognizant and awake yeah that was the first story i was going to talk about again there's four i'm only going to talk about two and only one is from the last book just because they're freshest in my mind i'm not actually sure now what shimmer to use on this side okay yellow not so great green okay in pigmentation didn't really work with the brown the brown i mean it, it's nice it's a very nice like cool tone blacky brown um but i don't know how much of that is actually the blending with the green and the extra brown itself yeah but the yellow and the i don't know there was something wrong with the yellow green combination and so i had to go in with the blue and i blended the the brown and the yellow out with the blue and kind of that's that's more that's working more i feel like but i would need another sort of blue addition to make it a actual blue look does that make sense because there's no like blue shimmer in here there's there's only one blue shade and there's no other blue so so I'm gonna go on with the purple shimmer on the side and I'm gonna do the pink on the side. Yeah, that was story number one. And the second story is actually in the book. I think it's the third story in the book. It's the second story in the book. So I can't believe I'm talking about consecutive story. Second story in the book is called The Farewell. Now already this is gonna sound, like it already sounds a little bit sad, right? The reason I loved this story so, so much was because it was about a dog. And I, I'm, I don't know if I've told you guys. I feel like I have. I should have if I haven't. I used to have a dog. 
His name was Prince. He was my little baby. We had a beagle and he got cancer. And so he passed away in 2018. It's been about six years, but I still miss him and I still love him. And the goal in life is still to have to, you know, have a house big enough and make enough money to have two dogs. I don't want to be able to support any other human being. I just want to support two dogs. Cool, cool. Okay, it was about a dog. Essentially, at the beginning, a guy walks into the cafe. I'm going to finish my face first and come back to the shimmers. So, a guy walks in the cafe. And he's like, um, I heard you can go back in the past or you can travel in time over here. And they're like, yeah, yeah, you can. Who do you want to meet? And he's like, it's not me. It's my wife. I want my wife to go back in time. And they're like, why? What happened? And so he said, and so he tells them that they had a dog named Apollo who recently passed away. And his wife has been really sad about it because she spent Apollo's last days just sort of being with him, nursing him 24 seven, all of that. And then one day he, she fell asleep and that's when Apollo finally passed away, which already, oh my God. <laughs> then it's like, okay, cool, fine. You want your wife to go back and to meet the dog, which is, which is fine right and then you get a little bit of a backstory where so then the wife comes into the cafe and she's like you know my husband visited and you know he was talking about you can't go back so you get a little bit of a backstory with the couple it's just like you know that they were trying to have kids they couldn't have kids something like that or or they didn't want kids something of the sort i think it was that they were trying they couldn't and one day the husband just showed up with the dog and they were okay on money because the husband's father left them a flat and you know so they didn't they weren't worried about getting a house and they weren't you know sort of and they both had stable jobs so it wasn't like a financial like they weren't financially badly off and so they talk about how one day the husband just went and picked up a dog and came home with a little baby puppy and this happened with my mom as well so um, we got Prince. My mom was very much on, you know, she was one of those typical moms who was like, it's, I, I stay or the dog stays. It's either me or the dog. And so we didn't get a dog for the longest time. And eventually my dad convinced her because of different things that happened. And so we got Prince, right? And we did a lot of research when we got Prince. Like small dog, you know, to take care of him, blah, blah, blah. And then eventually my mom was the most attached to him, honestly, you know? And so she, the wife, got attached to Apollo. And he's like, you know, she took care of him. She gave him food. She cuddled him, all of that. He, you know, she put him to sleep and all of that good stuff. Which even just like that just sounds, that's so adorable, right? And then, you know, you get sad because, you know, they passed away. Um, and... She's like, you know, I loved him with all my heart. And just when I was supposed to be there for him, I was awake and then I fell asleep and then he passed away. And so she's like, I want to go back in time and say goodbye. And they're like, you know, that even if you go back in time, you're not going to be awake. Like the rules are that you're not going to be able to stay awake. And it's like, yeah, I know. I just want to see him one last time. <sighs> Anyway, um, so she goes back in time and you know, it's, it's not very far back in time. Like it's, they said that Apollo's already really old and so on and so forth. And you know, they're going for, they're on a, like her husband and Apollo are on a walk outside and he smells her and he comes barking into the cafe and it's so cute. And then the husband looks at her and says, you came back from the future, didn't you? And she was like, yeah. And you know, she meets Apollo and, and whatever, and, and it's fine. But then in that meeting, the husband's there and he reveals to her and says, you know, um, no, 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 not in that meeting. When she comes back to the present, 
the husband reveals to her like you know he wouldn't go to sleep till you were asleep right and she's like what do you mean i used to put him to sleep and then go to sleep myself and he's like no you would put him to sleep he'd pretend to go to sleep you'd go in and you'd go to bed and then he'd come in he'd check on you see if you were really asleep and then go back outside and sleep and i was like oh my god <laughs> oh Whew. and so he was like so the husband tells her like I think it's that, I think it's less that you fell asleep and you missed his death. I think it's that he waited for you to go to sleep and then died. And I was like, I was crying so hard. I was sobbing. You could like, if you were outside my door, you'd probably be able to, be able to hear me crying in bed. Like it was, it was, I was devastated. It was so bad. <laughs> I don't know if I have convinced you yet. But basically, you know, there's one story where a sister dies and, you know, the older sister goes back in time to say, I'd just like to see my sister one last time, you know, and stuff like that. And it's just every book, every story, honestly, will make you cry. And if it doesn't, you are basically not human. I mean, not if it doesn't make you cry, but basically if it doesn't make you really feel things, you are not human, essentially. I believe this with my whole heart. I believe that if if these stories don't make you feel things, then you know, there's something wrong with you. I even told my if I like I even told my dad and I was like, you know, I need you to read this and I need you to like feel everything. And the way I told him and even he I don't know if he I don't think he cried, but even he was like he re he was really hit in the feels, but he was like, "Oh my god, that was Wow. Okay, definitely think that my red dragon palette shimmers are a bit, one better, but two also they've gotten old, just because these are way softer. And I remember them being softer even in that one, and like I was feeling it the last couple of times that I used it, but I didn't want to admit it, so you know. P.S. These are actually kind of the only lip tints I use now. They're the Nasific ones. They did like an eight piece set with Stray Kids when Stray Kids was still their ambassador. Now it's 80s. I have stickers of my babies on top. See, 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 this is Binny. Uh, it's a Changmin shade. Um, it's just like a cute, like, it's just like a, oh, like a pink. I basically only use these now because they're so comfortable on the lips and they don't feel drying and they have a shiny effect without while being dry you know like the ones like there was a one from maybelline that went viral recently they're kind of like that i have all eight unfortunately the color the one color i can't use is bangtan's color he's my bias by the way i can't use this color because it's far too light for me i tried it and it just it doesn't look good and it leaves those like creases and so and we're done okay so Let's talk about the three, two things that I was talking about. Palette, solid formula. Obviously, I'm a darker skin tone, so pastels aren't completely gonna work for me anyway. I'm not dark by no means. I'm a medium skin tone, but like a true medium, but I'm not pale, is what I mean when I say I'm a darker skin tone. So obviously pastels are gonna have an issue with my skin tone to begin with. I think the solution would be to use a lighter eye base. Issue being, I don't have one, I don't use one. As for the insides, the, I mean, for the form, the formula is great. Um, it's a solid sort of basic pastel palette. And normally you wouldn't use pastels alone anyway. Like you'd add them with like a darker shade, which I feel like I would have to do if I wanna use this. I think this is just if I want to add a pop of pastel in my eye look which is fine. I was gonna get the Natasha Denona palette for that anyway. And I'm so glad that this is so much cheaper and it covers all the basics for me. That's that, love the outside of it. You know, the sort of closure is great. It's got a mirror and all of that. It was, it was, oh, I didn't tell you this. I paid 30 pounds plus shipping, um, which was seven. But I paid 37 pounds total, which is not so bad for makeup. Thing number two that we were talking about, the book. Like I said at the beginning, I think everybody in the world should read these books. I think they're fabulous. I think they make us confront emotions that we didn't know we had and make us feel things that sometimes we don't because, you know, everyday life is hectic and you don't really have the time to feel things. 
Honestly, I was in that state for the last six months. I mean, sorry, the last six months of 2023. I was just running myself ragged and honestly, don't even know why. So, don't know, can you guys see my eyelids? Hang on, let me come forward and, and show you guys. Can you see now? So, pink, purple, blue, brownie. You see what I mean with the brown? Like, it's just a bit of an odd in between shade with the purple shimmer these are also like i've realized the odin size shimmers is they need a they need a matte base you need to put a matte color underneath just because they're like the only thing in them is the shimmer is the glitter and so if they don't have a base they just look like shimmer on your eyelid like it's just not like it's not an eyeshadow it's genuinely just shimmer glitter shine fabulous shimmer glitter shine but just shimmer glitter shine Cool. Cool. So, yeah. Cool. So, that was that. Hope you guys liked it. Hope you guys enjoyed. So, yeah, let me know if you guys read, have read the books, if you liked them. Ah, it's already 6 30. I've been filming for like an hour. It's been a while since I've done such a long video. Let me know if you guys liked, if you guys liked my video. You know, leave a like, comment for engagement, do all that good stuff. Let me know if you have this palette, if you bought it, if I, what you thought of the eyelids I did. Do you like Judy? This is really late because I feel like it might be sold out already. <laughs> Judy has a pretty big audience. If you read the books or if I've convinced you to read the books, let me know down below. If you read them, what you thought of them. If you haven't read them and I've convinced you to read them, let me know that I've convinced you to read them. And that's it for me. <laughs> so I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit down below and subscribe and leave a like on the video. And like I said, let me know all these things. And yeah, that's it for me. Bye!